good to you today. I hope you've experienced his blessings, and I hope that uh, you got something to sing about uh, and uh, shout about and praise the Lord about. Take your Bibles and look with me in the book of Philippians, chapter number 2. Philippians chapter 2. You ever heard anybody say, um, I can't be a Christian. I can't live the Christian life. And uh, sometimes folks give that excuse for not going to church. They say, you know, I don't want to be a hypocrite. And if I can't live like a Christian, uh, I, I'm not going to go to church. Well, um, you know, you've got you to admire somebody for their honesty. Amen. Uh, truth is, without Christ, nobody can live like a Christian. Um, but the difference is the Spirit of God in us and the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 lets us know that because of Christ, because of who he is and what he has done, we can live for him and we ought to live for him. And uh, I've given this uh, message this title, Because Christ Did, I Should. Because Christ Did, I Should. Now, it's, it's obviously not an exhaustive uh, uh, message. I mean, there's a lot of things that Christ did that we should. Uh, but here in Philippians chapter 2, there's, there's just a handful. I've got five of them tonight for you. Uh, a handful of things that Christ did, that, um, and, but because of who Christ is and what he did, uh, things that we ought to do ourselves. And um, I'm going to make up for last Wednesday night. I didn't, I didn't watch the clock last Wednesday night. And when I looked up, uh, I realized uh, I lost you before I looked at the clock. And then I looked at the clock, and I realized why I lost you, because uh, I'd already preached about 15 minutes over what I normally do. And so I'm going to make up for that uh, tonight and try not to, try not to lose you tonight. Um, hey, you can, you can live for God. You can live for Christ. And the reason you can is because Christ lives in you, and there's nothing God can't do. And so if God lives in you, there's nothing that you and I can't do either. The Apostle Paul said it this way, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now, we live in challenging days. I, I, um, uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, m- many of us are trying to figure out wh- how are we going to do what we know God wants us to do in the days to come uh, with all of the challenges that lie ahead. And um, that's a good question. It's a good question to ask, and it's a good question to answer, and it's, a, it's definitely something that we all pray about. We know that God wants us to win souls and take the gospel to the world. And I, I, I saw a question a pastor asked the other day. He said, uh, you know, when can we go back to knocking on doors again? And uh, the answer was, well, you can do it now, but you might want to wear a mask if you do it. Well, I don't know if it's a good idea to knock on somebody's door wearing a mask, do you? Uh, I think that might spook it somebody out. I, you know, it, there's just lots of, lots of questions that we don't have answers for right now. And, um, but there, there are answers to be had, I promise you that. And so we know that uh, the things that God wants us to do, we can do them. Uh, if we don't make excuses, uh, we can do them. Here are some things in the book of Philippians uh, that we know that we ought to do because Christ did. I'm just going to um, give you a summary of uh, verses 1 through 11. Uh, that just tells us how that Jesus, who was God, became man in the flesh, humbled himself, uh, became a servant, and was obedient unto death, the death of the cross. He died in our place for our sins. God died for man. And uh, you talk about humility. God died for man, and then God the Father exalted the Son. Uh, and uh, the Bible says uh, he's given him a name which is above every name, the name of Jesus. So uh, that's, who, uh, that's who we serve, and that's what he has done. Because of this, look at verse number 12. It says, Wherefore, because of who Jesus is, he's God in the flesh, who died in our place for our sins, he is exalted, and he is the king of kings that will rule and reign forever. Uh, because of who he is, because of what he has done, Wherefore, my beloved, he says, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Now, that ought to give you some excuses not to go outside. They're all wicked. They're all perverse. They're all crooked. I don't want to put myself in the midst of that. God says, don't worry about that with great courage and confidence. Go ahead and put yourself out there. 
and shine as lights in the world. Verse 16, he says, Hold forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. And so uh, in this portion of Scripture, I want to give you five things that we should do because Christ did. Number one, uh, continue in obedience. Continue in obedience. You say, well, it's, it's hard to walk with Christ. It's hard to live for God. It's hard to do right. It's hard to, to get anywhere in this world if you're not willing to cut corners and, uh, and shave a little off the top and, and make some, uh, some exceptions. It's hard to live a, a, uh, in, a black and, uh, in a gray world. It's hard to live black and white. It's hard just to do right all the times uh, at, uh, for, for all people in all places. Can I tell you, it's not hard. And it's possible, and you can do it, and God will bless that. He says, as, uh, My beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. Uh, the Apostle Paul had a great deal of confidence in the church at Philippi. He says, Listen, I know what kind of character you have. I know what kind of steel you're made of. I know that when I'm with you, you walk with the Lord. And I know that when I'm without when I'm not with you, you're still walking with the Lord. You are a very consistent, um, faithful group of people. Now, you couldn't say that about the church at Corinth, uh, but he could say that about the church at Philippi. He says, I know you. You, uh, you just take the word of God and you walk accordingly. Let me encourage you to keep doing that. It's not going to get easier. It's going to get a little bit more difficult. It'll get a little bit more challenging, but you can do that. You can continue in obedience. Um, I like uh, Charles Ryrie said it this way. Uh, he says, um, the way we do that, continue in obedience, when he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, it's God saved you, now you live like you're saved. You're a child of God, live like a child of God. Uh, it says, it is God that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He summarized those two, cha- to those two verses uh, with these words. This is, uh, this is just a, a quote from Charles Ryder. He says this, we ought to stand on our own two feet, with a sense of human frailty, but know that God is behind you. I like that, don't you? So I'm not God, I'm just a man, but I've been saved by God. I've been empowered by God. I can still fall, but, if, but God won't let me if I'll walk with him and I'll, and I'll trust him and I'll uh, uh, obey him and I'll walk it and, and work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. God will not only not let me fall, but God will propel me forward by his strength, by his grace, and by his power. The same grace that brought us unto salvation, uh, the book of Titus teaches us, uh, helps us to uh, live a godly life in this very present world. So the apostle Paul t- tells this church in Philippi, he says, keep obeying, uh, keep uh, continue in obedience. Uh, there's um, over in the book of Ephesians. Uh, look at this. This is a good reason to wake up every day and just serve the Lord. You, uh, some folks, some Christians uh, get weary in well doing, and they ask themselves, "For what reason would I continue to be faithful? Why would I keep teaching that Sunday school? Why would I keep uh, working with in that nursery? Why would I keep uh, tithing and and being faithful? Why would I keep witnessing when nobody is listening and nobody cares?" Uh, why would I keep reading my Bible when it seems like there's, there's nothing there uh, to help me with the problems I have in life? Uh, why, why, why? Well, uh, here's the question, uh, or here's the answer to that question. Uh, we're saved by grace. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 says, and we're saved by grace through faith. God saved us. We trusted him for that salvation. It's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So God did a work of salvation, and God will also do the work of service in our lives for us and through us. Notice what he said in, in verse number 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship. And say the next few words with me, church. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should do what? Walk in them. Now, if God has ordained something, God ordained the sun to shine. Did it shine? God ordained the moon to circle the earth. Has it circled the earth ever since he put it there? It absolutely has. Now, if God has created you a new creature in Christ Jesus and uh, unto good works and ordained that you, uh, you walk in those and perform those good works, hey, that's what the Apostle Paul is saying there in, in Philippians. He says, God 
which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Hey, it's not on you to get God's will done in your life. Isn't that a wonderful relief? How many of you think that's a big relief right there? I do. You know, it's not in me to accomplish great things for God. It's, it's, it's mine to do the little things that God wants me to do. It's mine to walk in obedience day in and day out. It's mine to work out my own salvation in fear and trembling. It's mine to acknowledge uh, that I have a responsibility to stand on my own two feet. I am a frail human being, but I have the grace of God in my life, and God will accomplish his work through me. I, I jokingly asked my wife this, uh, this morning, I said, um, uh, as I was leaving the house, and you say, well, what were you leaving the house for? Well, the kids, the little ones, have not been out of the house for uh, probably about three weeks. Not because of the coronavirus, but because mama's been busy <laughs> for the last three weeks. And uh, they just, they haven't been out. She, I was going to take them to the park and just get them out of the house yesterday, uh, but it just didn't work. The weather didn't work out for us uh, so well yesterday. And so this morning she said, uh, before I even got out of the bed, she said, can you take the kids to the park today just so they can run? I said, sure, I need to do that right now, though, before it gets, uh, you know, I was thinking too hot. And so I got up and took them out to the park, and guess what? It didn't get too hot, but it did get wet. And so I said, fooey on it, y'all just play in the rain. So uh, Anna and down, all the way down to Ada, were just running around the park, playing in the rain. I burned off a little bit of energy. But on my way out the door, I looked at her and said, Honey, uh, get me a sermon ready for tonight. So when I come home, I have, uh, have something ready to go. She said, All right, I'll get you one. <laughs> and so, uh, so, of course, I thought I was joking, and I thought she was joking. And um, about lunchtime, she said, I've got your sermon for you. Do you want it? And I said, Do you really? So I said, Give it to me. Let me see it. And uh, she said, Well, uh, this is just something I saw this morning as I was reading the Bible. And uh, she flipped over to the book of Acts. And uh, there in the book of Acts, I think it was chapter 11, uh, James, the brother of John, had been beheaded. He had been killed for his faith, his walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. But Peter, but Peter was still preaching and working and serving in the church. And later on down the line, he did, uh, according to church history, die for his faith. And uh, I jokingly told her, uh, well, first of all, she said, well, you know what? Uh, you, as a believer, you can't really measure yourself against another believer because it's not what you accomplish that God is looking for. Uh, if that's true, then James, uh, she didn't say all these words, but she, said, uh, she did say James died and didn't have a chance to do what Peter died. And the, the, the idea is you, you don't compare yourself with others. Uh, you do what God wants you to do. And it was God's will that James served up to that point. And then God allowed Satan um, and, and those who were influenced by Satan uh, to snuff his life out on this earth. But he didn't die in vain. Peter, however, was given a, a good bit longer to serve the Lord on this earth. And it doesn't mean that Peter was any more deserving of that, uh, that time. Um, it just means that God had something different for him. Hey, let me, let me just encourage you, Christian. Uh, you may be looking at some other believer. You may be looking at other Christians. And you may be thinking in your heart and your mind, I'm just not getting this thing done like they are. And they're a super Christian over there. And they're able to, you know, pray and, and, and the heavens open. And I pray and, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't have the same uh, response that, that they do. Uh, listen, if you're walking with the Lord, and if you're walking in obedience to the Lord, and you know in your heart that you're doing everything that the Lord wants you to do, God has a ministry for you. He has a ministry to do through you for His glory. And that ministry may be short, like uh, your, your opportunity may be short, like James. It may be large, like Peter's. It may be, uh, it may be small, and, and as Martha thought, seemingly insignificant as she prepared meals. Uh, it, may be, it may be large. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, as far as God's concerned, uh, that's irrelevant. What is God looking for? He's looking to see if we will continue in what? Obedience. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I, I'm, um, that puts wind in my sails. I don't know if it does you. Uh, will God fail? Absolutely not. What God has begun, he will complete. 
And God will work in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He does that in norm, a number of ways. Um, he, can, he can providentially arrange events in our lives so that he can accomplish his will uh, through us for his glory. And that, there's nothing... There's nothing um, hard about that for God. If you'll come to Sunday school Sunday morning, you'll see that how that God, in the near future, we don't know how far off, but in the near future, will take nations and use what's in their heart to accomplish his will. You got to come back Sunday morning for Sunday school uh, to see and, and learn about and read about all that. But it is nothing for God to take a man and, and providentially arrange events in his life and, and even uh, uh, take the desires of his heart and accomplish his will through those. And if God can do that uh, for nations, God can do that for individuals. It is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So this is what you do. Uh, you just wake up in the morning and you put one foot of faith in front of the next foot of faith. And you walk by faith, little by little, day in and day out. And one day when you look back, you'll see that a life lived by faith was the life that God used to accomplish his purposes and his tasks for his glory. So first of all, he says, church, um, continue in obedience. Christ was obedient unto death. Because he did, we should continue in obedience as well. Number two, cancel all complaining. Cancel all complaining. Look, look what he said there in verse 14. It says, do all things without, say it church, say it out loud. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Now that's what the children of Israel were known for in the wilderness. They're murmuring and they're disputing. And uh, that didn't get them very far. And it won't get you and I very far either. Uh, we, we, uh, we live in a culture that, that um, really exalts those who would fight for their rights. And those who would blow whistles. I'm not saying there's not a time and a place for that. There is a time and there is a place for uh, calling out uh, injustices and, and illegalities. Uh, but uh, when, uh, when we believe and begin to live and, and function as though the world revolves around us and it's our comforts and our convenience that are most important, uh, then we become very dissatisfied and very discontent and we begin to murmur and complain. And Christ, uh, God, through the Apostle Paul, helps us to realize uh, this is not what working your salvation out with fear and trembling looks like. It doesn't sound at all like complaining or murmuring. In fact, uh, we need to cancel all the complaints and all the murmurings. By the way, where was the Apostle Paul when uh, God used him to pen these words of Scripture? Does anybody remember? He was in prison. And it was a very good possibility that some of the folks who were reading this letter would maybe one day follow in his footsteps and be in prison as well. Uh, it, it, it was just happening to believers throughout the empire in this day. So he says, but don't worry about that. Don't complain about your lot in life. Uh, there's a, here's a good question. Why would, why would that be um, counterproductive? to walking uh, in obedience and working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Well, it would be so because of a promise that God gave us in Romans chapter 8. Look there with me real quick. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans chapter 8, and verse number 28. And this is a, uh, you've probably got the verse memorized. It goes just like this. And if you know it, you can quote it with me. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So uh, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called. Uh, so here, here it is. God has a plan for us. God has a purpose for us. God is working in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And as he's working in us to will and do of his good pleasure, sometimes he brings some unpleasant events into our life, but they're not brought into our life for, uh, for evil. They're brought into our life for good and for his glory. And so uh, when God adds those things or allows those things to be added to the mix, how should we respond? Should we respond with murmuring and, and disputing? 
absolutely not. That's not working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's not continuing in, uh, continuing in obedience. In fact, uh, we, we kind of default back to James 1. And what does he say? He says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. So rather than complain and murmur about adversity in your life, rejoice uh, and, and give thanks. Now, that's, that's counter. Uh, intuitive that that goes against our flesh i don't know if it goes against your flesh or not but i'm not one that shout hallelujah when i stump my toe i don't know about you uh i i jump up and down and and uh and and uh and think about uh, uh you know the pain and 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 the hurt and i get uh, uh you know just preoccupied with those things uh, i forget to praise the lord in those instances uh, but but god wants us to do this cancel all complaining you know, the first thing I do when I stump my toe on something in the house is I said, honey, you moved something around the house again. Uh, why do you keep moving furniture around the house? If you wouldn't move first, I blame it on my wife. If you wouldn't move things, I would never kick them. And um, that's just the truth, though. Uh, ladies, just put it where it belongs and leave it there and make everybody happy. Amen? Well, I, uh, you, and the reason I stump my toe, though, uh, you know, I got to give her a little bit of credit is because I never notice what she's moved around. She said, you, I, I do all this stuff and you don't even pay attention to it. You have no idea uh, that the whole house is being rearranged. So um, I guess I've, I'm at fault there as well. If I'd be a little more uh, observant, I, I might would notice these things. Continue in obedience. Cancel all complaining. Why? Because God's, God's doing a work for you. Don't complain about what God's doing in your life. He's, he's accomplishing his will there. That's nothing to complain about. That's a lot to praise the Lord about. Uh, number three. Cast a light with your life. Cast a light with your life. By the way, why did God save you? So I could go to heaven? Well, that's a byproduct of salvation. God saved you that you might bring honor and glory to his name. Um, you go back to the book of Ephesians. You can read the book of Ephesians. You'll, write, you'll find out that our salvation is for God's glory. It, he is revealing how m uh, majestic and wonderful and gracious and merciful he is in our salvation. Uh, you're, you're, we're not sal saved only to go to heaven. That's a, that's a byproduct of salvation. We are saved to be a testimony of God's grace and majesty on this earth. Uh, you say, how do you know that? Well, uh, because Christ came from heaven to shine on earth as the light of the world, we also ought cast the light with our life. Look at verse 15. He says, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God. God Jesus told his disciples that they would, should be a wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And uh, we're, we're to continue in that, uh, that way of living. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Peter, we read uh, there in the epistle there, he, he tells us that men will uh, speak evil against you. We, we preached about this uh, just, uh, just a little bit ago. Uh, men will accuse you, falsely accuse you. Men will make you look bad so they can make themselves look better. Men will use you Christians as scapegoats for all the evils uh, and problems of this, of this world. He says, but when that happens, uh, make sure you're like a Teflon-coated pan. You say, what is a Teflon-coated pan? Well, uh, a Teflon-coated pan is a pan that uh, resists uh, those things that are cooked in it. It just kind of pushes back on them so that whatever hits it doesn't stick to it. He says there's going to be accusations. There'll be false accusations. There'll be rumors. And there'll, there'll be hurtful things said uh, about you and, and uh, to you. Uh, it says, but, uh, but when these accusations come, make sure that there's nothing that would cause them to stick. It doesn't mean you're a perfect person. It means you're blameless. It means you're, uh, those, those accusations won't stick. It doesn't mean you didn't do wrong. But what it means is when you did wrong, you took care of it and you made it right. And so that when the accusations come, you say, you know what? You're right. I did that. But here, I, I, paid, I paid it back. Here, I made it right. Here, uh, you see the intentions that I had were not evil. They were good. So be blameless. Uh, cast a light. Why is it important that we live blameless lives? Not not um, uh, not crooked or perverse or twisted lives. Uh, we do that so that we can shine as lights in the world. So we can shine as lights in the world. Politics is a is a nasty uh, is a nasty game. 
And what is the goal of politics? To make your opponent look as bad as he can. And the closer we get to the elections uh, this year, the, the more dirt and um, uh, accusations will be piled up by opponents against uh, or by uh, contenders against their opponents. And it's just we see it every every couple years. We just see it. Um, you know what's a blessing when those when those accusations don't stick, when they don't stand, when when you're honest and upright in your dealings and you are a reflection of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ on this earth. The Bible says he lived um, Though he died in our place for our sins, he was without sin, without sin. Um, and th that's how God wants us to live. He wants us to live in such a way that we cast a reflection of the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. We cast the light of Christ on our world, uh, shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you say, what's, the, uh, what's one of the best ways to do that? Well, one, walk in obedience to the word so that there's... there's you know, somebody's not going to come up and say, well, this man lies. He's not truthful. He's not honest. He's always twisting something just a little bit uh, to so things will fall out in his favor. It might not be a whole lie, but it's a half truth. And a half truth is just as much a whole lie as a whole lie is. And the people don't, people just don't, they're not, they don't take to that very well and very kindly. And so walk in your integrity uh, so that uh, you can walk in obedience to the Word of God. Uh, but there's another way to cast the light, and what is that? Number four, constantly proclaim uh, the message of salvation. Look at verse 16. It says, Shine as lights in the world, in the world holding forth the word of life. Holding forth the word of life. Uh, I've heard, um, I heard somebody say not too long ago that they've listened to a preacher on a number of occasions and that preacher never did take his Bible and open it up and use it. Now, I've never heard that particular preacher, and so I can't say one way or the other, uh, but I don't want anybody to have uh, any notion that I would ever stand here uh, outside of the words of life. And when you live your life... Uh, we have the privilege to live a, um, uh, to be living epistles, to walk in obedience, but we also have the grand responsibility given to us by God uh, to take the word of life, to take um, this scripture and share it with the world. Uh, what was it that God told the children, uh, the, the Christians to do? It says, preach the gospel to the world. And so it, it, uh, the gospel is not what I think. It's not what you think. It's what God says. And so we, the, one of the best ways to shine the light of Lord Jesus Christ is to constantly proclaim the truth of God's word. By the way, how will they hear without a preacher? It's by the word of God that faith is built. And so God's given us a great privilege. Uh, you say, well, I don't know how to preach the word of God in, in, the, in the day that we live. Uh, it's, it's still not hard. You can do it. You can drop a track uh, and, and pass those tracks everywhere you go. The, the cashier at Walmart, she'll take your, cha your track from you. You can stick one in the, um, uh, the bank, uh, the little bubble thing that shoots through the vacuum cleaner at the bank. You can, you can take and stick a track in there and give it to the teller at the bank. Uh, you can leave one there by the, the, uh, the gas station as you're pumping gas. Somebody's on the other side. Hey, just uh, pull up a little conversation with them. Uh, those in your family that you spend time speaking to, uh, make sure you keep the Word of God in, in, in part of those conversations. Constantly proclaim the Word of God. That's how you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's, what, that's a tool God will use to work through you to accomplish His purposes and His plans. By the way, how many of you, someone witnessed to you and told you about the Lord Jesus Christ? Anybody? When you, when you became a believer, somebody, whether it's a preacher in a pulpit, a Sunday school teacher in a classroom, uh, or a friend, um, or, an, or, or a relative, uh, opened the Word of God and just shared with you the truth of God. Anybody? Yeah, so most all of us. So what did God do? God worked out his will, and he accomplished his will through us or through somebody for our good. 
And God will do the same thing through his word as we proclaim it for others if we'll be faithful to do that. And God will accomplish his purposes. He, he's working in us uh, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So one, continue in obedience. Two, cancel all complaining. Three, cast a light with your life. Four, constantly proclaim the gospel. And then last of all, number five, cherish the influence of your influencer. Uh, that, that's a big word now, influencers, on Instagram and YouTube, and uh, people are just out there wanting to be an influencer. Influence people to buy a product, uh, to take a trip, to do this or do that. Uh, we used to call them salesmen, uh, but they're not salesmen anymore. Now they're influencers. they got a big fancy name, and they travel the world influencing people. Well, uh, cherish the influence of your influencer. Look what the Apostle Paul says. Uh, here in verse, uh, verse number 17, he says, Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, if perhaps, um, you know, I don't get out of jail, and if perhaps I die, he says, I what? I joy, and I rejoice with you all. What is he rejoicing in for them? that they have put their faith in Jesus Christ and that they will soon see Christ as he will see Christ if it so happens that they, they take his life uh, while he's in prison. He says, I, I am, I'm so excited here uh, that, uh, that this, if this happens, I will, I will be beside myself and I will rejoice with you all. Uh, what, is he, what is he so excited about? Well, in verse number 16, he said this, um, I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. He said, I gave my life in obedience to the word of God. I, I, have, um, I have canceled all complaining, even though I've been whipped and stoned and, and beaten and, and shipwrecked and starved and left out in the cold and left out in the heat and, and uh, imprisoned, even though all these things have happened to me. Um, I'm not complaining about all those things. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, I, I, have, I, I count it all joy to be able to uh, be a partaker of the fellowship of the sufferings of my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, so I've canceled off complaining, and, and I've done everything I can do to cast a light with my life, to live a life in his own words, void of offense between God and man. He said, I, I've constantly proclaimed the Scripture everywhere I go so that um, I'm not uh, responsible for anyone under my sound, the sound of my voice not hearing about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, because I've done these things and you have received the truth of the gospel and you've become a follower in the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, that lets me know that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. I've given my life to influence you for the Lord Jesus Christ and you've been influenced and I will rejoice with you all if I have to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ in the next week or month or year. He said, it's no, no problem. But look what he said there in verse number 18. He said, for the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. You're excited that I came into your life. And you rejoice that the same God that I've served you now serve. And you rejoice that if I do die, you will see me once again. And this, com this truth, this, this a reality that God has begun a work in us and that God uh, will, uh, will, uh, will both uh, the work in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure, uh, whether that uh, is, uh, ends in death or whether that ends in life, uh, we can rejoice together in those things. You know what? I, I, I thank the Lord for my parents. I thank the Lord for the pastors in my life. I thank the Lord for the teachers and those who've given their life to influence me uh, for the gospel. And I look forward uh, to being able to see them again one day in heaven. But there's, there's something else I want. And I hope you want it as well. I hope one day when I stand before the Lord in heaven that I will be able to stand there with joy because not only have I been influenced by the gospel and by the one who is bringing that gospel witness to me, but I would have in turn influenced others to walk in obedience and in faith. Uh, Jesus Christ 
Uh, he, what did he do? What did he come for? He came to seek and save the lost, to give us, uh, not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give us life a ransom for many. And he's told his disciples, he said, the things that I've done, uh, you'll do greater things. So I've influenced you 12. Now you're going to go out and influence many more. And uh, the Apostle Paul was one who was influenced by the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. He in turn took that influence and he passed it on to the church at Philippi and the church at Corinth, the church at Thessalonica and, and all over Asia and uh, even over into Rome. And he took the influence that he had received in Christ and he multiplied that amongst others so that not only was he looking forward to seeing Christ in glory, he was looking forward to seeing those he had influenced in glory and he was hoping that those who, would, who had been influenced by him would in turn do what? Influence others. For the glory of Jesus Christ. Hey, uh, this is, uh, we've, we've kind of been on a hiatus, it seems like. And uh, struggling uh, as, as believers to figure out how to get ministry back uh, in, in place. Can I tell you, this didn't take God by surprise, amen? God is still working in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And there, there's a way that God wants us to be faithful to him and, and to continue to shine his lights for him in this day. And I'm praying and trusting that God will help us not lose that passion to influence others for his glory and for his sake. And uh, the Holy Spirit of God is in, is in us to help us, and we can get that done. We can get that done for his glory. Amen? Let's stand. Father, we love you. Thank you for the privilege to serve you. And Lord, would you, would you help us? Uh, Lord, it, it, it is time uh, for us to uh, be bold with our witness. It's time for us to be wise with our witness. It's time for us to take the gospel and share it and be an influencer uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's time, Lord, for us to uh, continue to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling and to be obedient, continue in obedience to the Word of God. So, Lord, help us. Help us to look for opportunities and help us look for times and places and people uh, to make a difference uh, for you, or really, Lord, to allow you to make a difference through us in their lives for your glory and for their good. Help us just to be vessels, we ask in Jesus' name. Our eyes are closed, heads are bowed. Caden's playing our hymn. Maybe somebody on your heart today, you've been praying and thinking and uh, asking the Lord to be a blessing to him or her. It may be that they don't know Christ as their Savior. And the, the greatest thing in their life, uh, the greatest need in their life is, is Christ as a Savior. Uh, the Apostle Paul knew that. As a matter of fact, he knew that reality uh, so well that he said, I would die for my brethren if they could uh, have their salvation. But unfortunately, he couldn't believe for them or die in their place for them. Jesus did that, and he realized that. But, it, but that burden and that knowledge and that understanding that the greatest need that they had was a Savior weighed on him heavily. Maybe you'd like to take your friend, your, your co-worker, your relative, a child or a parent or a niece or nephew or, or aunt and uncle or brother or sister, lay them before the Lord and just ask the Lord to help them see Christ in you. The altar's open, you come. Father in heaven, we love you. Thank you for the privilege to serve you. Lord, you've given us a high, holy calling. And Lord, you, you will fill us and work through us to accomplish that calling. It's not on us to get it done. It's just in us to yield ourselves as vessels of righteousness, instruments of righteousness. And, and Lord, just to walk in obedience to you. Just declare the truth everywhere we can and to everyone we can. And, and Lord, we know that you will bless that. Help our lives to be lives of integrity that would be blameless, that men would be embarrassed when they speak evil against us. And Father, I pray that you'd continue to accomplish your plans and your purposes through us for your glory. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. <laughs>